First I have a movie I'd like to show you. The top part of this movie shows the voltage versus spatial position along the transmission line. And on the bottom we'll see the voltage plotted at z equals zero, so at the generator, versus time. Let's see what happens when we play this video. You can see the voltage at z equals zero stays 0.25 volts until right there, right when the V1 minus uh, wave reaches the generator. Every time the pulse reaches the generator again, there's a sudden change in the voltage at z equals zero. And here is the solution. Notice that the voltage in the current is equal to V1 plus and I1 plus until there's enough time has elapsed for the wave to propagate all the way down the transmission line and back again. And that is equal to 2 times capital T seconds. At 2 T seconds, the amplitude of the voltage wave at the generator becomes V1 plus plus V1 minus and plus don't forget that V2 plus that's created as soon as the V1 minus wave reaches the generator. And similarly for the current. Now do these plots remind you of anything? As time progresses, the voltage is converging to a specific value. And here I've highlighted that for you. It's value of Vg, which is our generator voltage. And the current is converging to zero. You might have seen that earlier in the long movie that I showed. Can you think of a basic circuit element for which this would also happen? Indeed, these plots resemble those of a charging capacitor by a battery through its 3 z naught resistor. And this is exactly what's happening. The equivalent capacitor being charged, C equivalent, is C prime L. And the RC time constant for this case, tau equivalent, is 3T. Note that if you were taking measurements, you wouldn't necessarily see these jumps in the measurements, because they happen uh, quickly, and they might happen more quickly than the sampling rate of the measurements, and the reflections may just be picoseconds apart. As a result, here is an equivalent circuit for the open circuited transmission line at z equals zero, where the load is an open circuit, neglecting the jumps due to the wave reflections within the transmission line. Okay, so if we take a step back and consider the plots we just created here on the bottom of this slide, we can see that we could take a measurement of the voltage at the beginning of the transmission line where the generator is located, right here, z equals zero and we, re we can record the voltage versus time. Then we can check to see if the voltage level changes when we expect it to, based on the length of the line and that the voltage changes to the level we would expect it to change to based on the reflection we expect from the load at the end of the transmission line. Go ahead and get out your in-class project notebook and briefly describe the normal operation of a transmission line basically describe what we can what uh, happened on what can happen on a general transmission line like the one we just analyzed and how we can calculate the voltages currents and reflections and so forth and how we can take a measurement to see if things are working as expected on a physical transmission line